Good evening and welcome to the second half of our first day of the 2016 Innovation Summit. I'm Brian Holst and it's really a tremendous pleasure to be here. I want to thank our sponsors, the Juno Suicide Prevention Network, Iceland Air, Juno Hydropower, Alaska Airlines, the University of Alaska Southeast, Sea Alaska, Ha'ani, are, as our premier sponsors that contributed a tremendous amount to make this event possible. There, if you look at the back of your program, you'll see a list of, uh, of another number of sponsors, and we have their logos showing at all times here in the back of the room. So please make an effort to thank those sponsors. As when Mr. Schumann was talking about uh, economic development organizations, this is an event that fully pays for itself by your paying to participate and by the generous sponsorship support. And we really appreciate that we can sustain this activity. So this evening we have a great, hey. we, have, we have a great lineup for you, but to, uh, to, to get it started, I'd like to introduce Dr. Daniel White. He's the University of Alaska Vice President for Academic Affairs and Research. Dan previously served in positions of interim vice chancellor for research director of the Office of Intellectual Property and Commercialization, and director of the Institute of Northern Engineering, all at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. Dan joined UAF as a faculty in engineering. He earned a bachelor's degree in physics and civil engineering from Colorado College and Washington University, respectively. He earned his PhD in civil engineering from the University of Notre Dame. Go Irish! That is not the only reason we've invited Dan White, but it certainly helps him. Dr. White. Well, thank you, Brian. It's, it's, a, it's really a great pleasure to be here, and I appreciate the invitation to, to come back. I've uh, dedicated a lot of my career to innovation, and it's just so rewarding to see so many people who have, share that same passion. Uh, Brian asked me to give you a little update on research commercialization at the University of Alaska. And five years ago, if you don't know, or if you weren't here last year, I gave a short update. Five years ago, the university decided what we were doing in commercialization wasn't working. We were focused on intellectual property and, and the patent, the patent as the goal. So five years ago, we, we stopped doing that and we pivoted and said, what, what is it that we really need to focus on? And what we needed to focus on was commercialization. Not having the patent as the goal, but having that, pro that product, that research, put into practice and, and diversifying Alaska's economy. That was our goal. And so we, we reorganized, <clears throat> started to focus on volume. What we really needed were all of the inventors all across the university system bringing their inventions in. And the more volume that we had, the more deal flow that we could have. And instead, there are many universities that have have closets full of patents, and these patents have no commercial value because there's lots of things that you can patent, but the key is to patent things or protect things that, that have value to private companies and, and industries that know how to make money with them. And so we've done that. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to say that just that message uh, got out to faculty, staff, and students across the university. And, and in the first year uh, after the reorganization, all years previously, we kind of, the whole university all together hovered at around six inventions per year. That is, people came forward with six inventions. The year after we reorganized, 35 inventions walked in the door. The year after that, 75 inventions walked in the door. The year after that, 75 more inventions walked in the door. And so when we have that many inventions coming through the door at the University of Alaska, we can look at those and say, which ones have commercial value? And, I, and I'm happy to say that, that a number of those have turned into licenses. We have licenses to companies all across the country and in Alaska. We have uh, also some new startup companies. There are several new startup companies in Fairbanks, several new startup companies in Anchorage. And these are focused around the areas of strength in those communities. Uh, Fairbanks has focused its intellectual property development around its expertise in geophysics, in climate modeling, in remote sensing, and University of Alaska Anchorage has focused its intellectual property development around uh, medical technologies and around construction, two of the focus areas uh, for the university, which happens to be in the UMed district, so that all makes sense, taking advantages of the strengths of the locations. 
One of the things that, that we've used as a principle is that if commercialization is our goal, our goal is to get technologies out. And if the university just makes a teeny little bit of money, but it's, it's, uh, that product is used a lot of times, that license is used a lot of times, that's a great thing. And so as opposed to focusing on revenue, we focused on the other end, and I think that's working. So happy to, happy to announce that, that things are going great at the university, and I encourage you all uh, to get engaged. Uh, there is lots of need for investors in these new companies, uh, lots of need for entrepreneurs. Many of the companies are, are starting out with just their chief technology officers. If you're an entrepreneur and you want to get involved in the university and its startups, uh, please come see me. Uh, or a researcher. If you're a researcher, you're working with the university, talk to them about intellectual property and about how to get those ideas out of the university and into the private sector. So come be a part of the university, be a part of its intellectual property development, and be a part of diversifying Alaska's economy. One of my hats as Vice President for Academic Affairs and Research is I get the pleasure of co-chairing the State Committee for Research. And the State Committee for Research took a first ever step last year in recognizing the work of the research and development cluster of JEDC. So as you probably know, know JEDC has their research clusters initiative. And the research cluster has uh, done a lot of work and recognized that Southeast is a hub for research between the university and NOAA and the Forest Service and has taken advantage of that. And I'd like to ask uh, Drs. Dave Damore and Shannon Atkins Atkinson to come up, please. It's because of this work that, that uh, the SCORE unanimously voted to recognize the R&D cluster for their work uh, by recognizing, come on up here, and maybe over here if you would, because I think there's a photo op. Um, recognizing them, and this is the first time that this has been done, as a this says, a community of excellence in research granted to Southeast Alaska as represented by the Juno, uh, by the Research and Development Cluster Working Group of the Juno Economic Development Council in recognition of your success as a community committed to promoting research and innovative development and taking steps to engage industry and education leaders. Well, thank you very much again. I appreciate being here and uh, appreciate this venue. Keep up the passion for intellectual property and commercialization. Thank you. Thank you for that recognition. Now it's a, my pleasure to introduce uh, a friend and strong supporter of economic development in our region and somebody that uh, believes and trusts uh, the possibility of, of innovation, and that's uh, Beth Pendleton. Beth Pendleton has been the Alaska Regional Forester since 2010. As Regional Forester, Beth oversees management of more than 22 million acres of National Forest System lands in South Central and Southeast Alaska. She works closely with the region's diverse stakeholders and communities of interest, especially on issues related to forest restoration and strengthening rural community health. Beth Pendleton has worked in natural resources coast to coast for more than 25 years. She holds a bachelor's degree in wildlife biology from the University of Vermont, a master's in wildlife and fisheries from South Dakota State University, and a master's in journalism from the University of Wyoming. She's also a graduate of Harvard's Senior Executive Fellows Program at American University Key Leadership Program. And the Juno Economic Development Council owes her and the Forest Service a debt of gratitude when we proposed a cluster-based approach for economic development here in our region when it hadn't really been tested anywhere uh, before. She uh, supported it and supported it with a lot of enthusiasm right until today. So great pleasure. Uh, please help me to welcome Beth Pendleton. Well, good evening. It's great, it really is great to be here. Um, I'm feeling uh, just a surge of energy from the uh, innovation shorts today. I think last year was the first year for the shorts and 
I'll tell you, um, the creativity, the innovation, the excitement. I was able to pop in each of the rooms and catch, uh, catch some of those innovation shorts and uh, makes me proud of the, just what we have here in Southeast Alaska uh, in the, just the energy and the creativity. So thank you for that. Thank you for the great work that folks are doing. Um, it's been great to participate today uh, in this first day of the Innovation Summit hosted by JEDC. I think there's a, a great turnout this year and it's exciting to see that we have all facets of business and government and industry in the state uh, and hearing from our governor this morning and really looking forward to all of the keynotes uh, and the um, contributions uh, that you will bring to this uh, amazing summit. Um, we've talked a bit today too about partnerships, collaboration, and the ability to share resources. And as I also think about some of these tough economic times, it becomes even more important um, our working together across the various sectors. It's not just money, but it really is the ideas, the innovation, and the Alaska entrepreneurial spirit. Um, as Alaska's policymakers work to resolve the state government's fiscal crisis, it's really exciting that we're here this week to support local and regional economic opportunity through innovation. I appreciate the time and imagination um, of JEDC and what you've put into planning this summit, uh, which the Forest Service has helped to support, as Brian noticed, from its inception uh, four or five years ago. Um, in providing support for the cluster initiatives and the summit. And I'm really proud of uh, the Forest Service folks that are here. We have about 20 participants, uh, including Dr. Dave Damore from our, our research facility here in Juneau. But we've got folks that presented innovation shorts today, John Neary uh, from the Mendenhall Glacier Visitor Center and Bob Deering, our regional energy coordinator, and George Schaff uh, on partnerships. But there is tremendous creativity um, in the Forest Service community. And I just want to acknowledge all of those from the service that are here and are sharing your innovation and your excitement with this group. Um, the Forest Service is also, I think we're part of USDA. A lot of people don't know that. Um, and um, in USDA, there are several other agencies which have really been critical in helping um, with economic development. And they include the rural, develop, rural Development, the Natural Resources Conservation Service, Farm Services Agency. There are sister agencies. They've been key partners here in Southeast in helping with many, many different initiatives. And I'd like to acknowledge those folks as well. Um, I'd also like to um, just share a couple of things um, that the Forest Service is involved in, and, and Brian asked me to touch on those. Hopefully you've had the chance to visit the booth out in the front with the cabin. You can have your picture taken there, and you can get some great information on the cabins in southeast and south central Alaska, which really is a key part of our Forest Service heritage and really the state's heritage. So take an opportunity to, to visit that booth this evening and tomorrow and get some information there. Another um, area that we've been supporting is uh, community capacity grants. And again, at the booth out there, you can pick up information. Uh, the Community Capacity Grants is a program that the Forest Service and the National Forest Foundation, which is our nonprofit uh, organization supporting Forest Service, and together we have been offering these small capacity grants up to $24,000 uh, each year for the last four years. We've offered about $450,000 in grants, and they're really focused at uh, entrepreneurship and um, providing seed grants um, for startup businesses um, in communities across the Tongass National Forest. Um, these grants provide the resources to create what oftentimes starts as a dream, as a concept on paper, and provides seed money and technical assistance to communities and local groups to design and implement everything from restoration projects uh, to, creating, to creating jobs. The applications for this next round of grants are due March 25th, so you still have a little bit of time to um, submit your grant proposal. And if you visit the booth, you can pick up um, a form out there. 
So with 80%, roughly 80% of the land in Southeast Alaska is comprised of the Tongass National Forest. So sometimes people, they scratch their head and they say, well, why is the Forest Service so engaged? And it's just that, because we are a part of the fabric of communities um, here, both in Southeast and South Central um, Alaska. In 2015, the Forest Service uh, employed over 600 permanent employees and about 220 seasonal workers in Alaska. And our employees um, live in the communities, they attend the churches, work with the scout groups and all the different activities in each of those small communities across Southeast and South Central. They also own and rent housing, they pay property taxes, they purchase goods, and services locally. So we are a part of uh, communities and the health of those communities in many ways, not just economic, but also social and culturally. So in order to tr attract business and residents, communities need to offer plentiful and affordable energy. This has been a key area that the Forest Service has been um, working in for a number of years. And for those of you who are able to hear the presentation by Bob Deering, who talked about some of the renewable energy opportunities. You probably learned a bit in there, and especially about woody biomass. Both of Alaska's national forest uh, management uh, plans encourage renewable energy production. And currently, uh, there are about 15 permitted hydropower plants serving over 18 communities uh, just in southeast Alaska. The Forest Service is helping to deploy biomass energy systems that use young growth and mill waste timber resources to heat and power small communities statewide. If you've been down on Prince of Wales Island and visited the school in Kaufman Cove and the amazing greenhouses they have going there, that's just one example of many uh, that have been uh, powered by woody biomass. Renewable energy from our forests also displaces tens of millions of gallons of expensive diesel fuel. It makes sense, and there's lots of area and opportunity for innovation with renewables. So in addition to renewable energy, the Forest Service supports um, access into the forest. We maintain over 600 miles of road. Uh, to passenger car standards and another 16 high, uh, 1,600 miles of road for high clearance vehicles. And as you heard um, this afternoon, among Alaska's top economic drivers are mining, seafood and marine industries and tourism. Alaska's national forests play a large part in the revenue generated by these economic sectors. There are currently two large mines operating on Forest Service land in Southeast, producing over 176,000 ounces of gold and nearly 6 million ounces of silver, and that was in 2015. And Hecla's Greens Creek uh, mine is Juneau's largest private sector employer and tax revenue generator. So again, the national forests through these activities are really providing a substantial uh, economic opportunity uh, to local communities. The Tongass and the Chugach National Forests are also salmon forests. Wild salmon spawned and reared from habitat managed by the Forest Service account for about 40% of Alaska's commercial salmon harvest with the catch in total worth $414 million in X vessel value in 2015. And Alaska's new mariculture farms are also reliant on healthy watersheds from the Tongass and the Chugach, and they're renowned for some pretty tasty oysters. So there's incredible benefits that come um, from, from your national forests. So many of Alaska's uh, 1.9 visitors, and for those of you that um, heard from Kirby uh, Day, who heads up the visitor products cluster, I wanted to just take a couple minutes about the value of these forests too um, for, um, our, for our visitors and for that sector of our income, our public services sector. So many of Alaska's 1.9 million visitors spend a portion of their visit recreating on the Chugach and the Tongass. They come to fish, to hunt, to camp, to hike, 
and even dog sledding. Uh, the visitor industry contributes over $3.7 billion to Alaska's economy. That is huge. Um, the visitor products cluster has been especially successful in affecting um, the agency's bottom line to provide increased uh, visitor use days, for example, out at the Mendenhall Visitor Center, and um, resources and funding uh, to really help to improve visitor amenities across um, both forests. Um, for those of you that heard George Schaff's presentation, you heard about the innovation on the Chugach National Forest, an incredible public-private venture, the Forest Service with the Alaska Railroad to bring visitors out to Spencer Glacier and some incredible opportunities in that area. I believe that there's more opportunity for public-private uh, venture and for innovation, and I look forward uh, to working together to provide those opportunities to get our residents and our visitors um, out into the public lands. So we um, also are doing quite a bit of work uh, currently as we're transitioning from harvest of predominantly old growth to a sustainable harvest of smaller diameter young growth trees. And here there's tremendous opportunities for innovation. And I want to call out to Larry Jackson, who is from um, Tongass Enterprises, who is one of many who is stepping out and being innovative and creative and looking at opportunities uh, to diversify our wood products industry. Uh, the Forest Service is, is working hard to uh, work with the private sector and to look at new ways for developing innovative value-added forest products such as uh, those that Larry is producing. And really, I think Southeast Alaska in the, in the future is ripe uh, to reestablish new opportunities in that sector of our economy. The Forest Service uh, wants Alaska to, pro uh, to prosper from our national forests, to cultivate diverse industries that thrive in a healthy and sustainable manner. Uh, we provide jobs roads, infrastructure, energy, forest products, and visitor service along breathtaking natural wonders. The Forest Service is here in Alaska supporting families, businesses, and communities, and doing its part in supporting local, regional, and statewide economic prosperity. So in closing, um, again, I encourage you to take a few minutes to stop by our booth uh, tomorrow in the lobby to start planning your next Stay Wild Alaska trip where you can fish, hike, hunt, relax, and reconnect with family, friends, and nature. You can even put your feet up and shoot a selfie while sitting comfortably in front of a Forest Service cabin. And while there, you can also learn about some of the innovations in woody biomass energy. And I, you ought to you can, you can charge your cell phone with the wood-burning unit that they have out there, so it's pretty cool. Uh, and also, make sure you take a look at the grant opportunities with the capacity grants, and enjoy the rest of the summit. Thanks.